it's nice to be able to tell stories for a living. It's what I always wanted to do. The, the thing that surprised me, of course, was the dangerous book for boys, because that was the one that was my hobby book that I didn't think anyone else would like. Um, my brother said at the beginning, do you think it'll be a bestseller? And I said, honestly, no, but we'll get copies of our own from the publishers and we'll be able to stick them on the shelves. And it's, it, that, was, that was wonderful, just because I didn't think there were so many people out there who cared about the same things. It was a, it was a real surprise to me from start to finish. Becoming a father was pretty much the motivation for writing The Dangerous Book for Boys, um, partly because when I realised I had a boy, I looked around and there, and there weren't the sort of books I'd enjoyed so much when I was a kid, because my, my dad was ancient and his father was impossibly ancient when he had him. Um, so we had, we had books sort of with titles like 101 Chemical Amusements for Boys and you know, things like that, really old-fashioned books. And when I looked around for similar things, because they'd give me enormous fun, I mean, I used to try blowing up, you know the old flower tin thing? We get a tin and you put flour in it and then you blow the air in and you got a candle in the tin and as soon as the flour becomes particles it just blows it. It was brilliant anyway. There didn't seem to be books like that around so I, I just wanted to write one and, and in many ways you know it was a kind of compendium of all the things we had done and a few things we kind of thought it was a bit of a shame that they weren't being taught anymore. Stories of heroes and that sort of thing. And it was written in a fairly innocent way. I didn't want to do a postmodern. Uh, book, sort of where we all, you know, lots of little in jokes for adults. I wanted to write it for kids, for the kid I was, and for my, my son when he gets a little older. He's, he's still a little young, he's only, only seven. Um, but anyway, he can do the paper aeroplanes and, and a couple of the knots. Um, so, that, you know, I think he'll enjoy it as he gets older. And that, that's all we ever wanted to do. The fact that it was successful was, you know, a wonderful byproduct. But I was amazed by the success of the book. I think the reason it was successful is because I accidentally tapped into a feeling in the, the country, I think. On a number of levels. First of all, I think there's a lot of people who think they haven't been taught the history. They have this vague sense. Um, A.A. Gill once said the British got history, the French got cooking, the Italians got style, the British got history. Um, you know, there's this vague sense that Britain has this amazing history, but for some reason we've decided not to teach it in the schools anymore. And there was that sort of sense that my generation have grown up not having the certainties of, of other previous generations. You know, we used to know things. My father still thinks he knows things. Um, but th there's a generation coming through that don't. I mean, laws change so quickly now. You know, when, when my dad was a boy, when I was a boy, you know, habeas corpus used to exist, and now it doesn't. Now it's 42 days, and that changed only recently. Things like that, um, you know, are, are quite important. I think you should know a little bit about the world around you and the history and the, the places that brought you to where you are today. I suppose, first and foremost, I'm most interested always in the books. There are some other things that have come from this particular book to do with merchandising and the rest of it that I absolutely loved. I mean, there's a, the board game is the one that's stuck in my mind because I was playing it with my son. And he, one of the questions came up and he said, what is the cardinal rule, the golden rule of carpentry? And I knew it was measured twice and cut once because my dad told me it was measured twice and cut once and I put that in the book which went into the board game. And I loved that. It was eerie playing something that was so completely not a book and yet hearing my father's advice to me from when I was a kid. So I absolutely loved that thing. And, you know... I'll never be too keen on internet adaptions or mobile phone games or anything like that because I do believe that kids need to read and to get outside a little bit. I read recently that if you actually wanted to get rid of a child um, and you left them outside the door, you'd have to wait 200,000 years. Um, you know, by that point, they'd have grown up. I mean, people worry about things a great deal too much, and at the end of the day, heart disease kills an awful lot more people than just about anything else. So if you want your kid to be healthy, you know, get them outside. And that was uh, part of that zeitgeist business. Um, I think a lot of people started to feel that way as well. The kids aren't safer when they're sort of fat and pale, sitting in front of a, a flickering computer screen at two in the morning. Um, so we did the best we could.